Okay, I've got the speaker wired in. Got my voltmeter on the main DC supply to the radio. 150 watt light bulb in series. And here goes. Oh, I did not put the 80 rectifier tube back in. Try that again. Hmm, it's no B plus whatsoever, so I'm gonna have something hooked upright. Now I'm on the other side of the field coil. Which I have not checked, so I've got my DC voltmeter over here, and the uh, so the supply comes out of the rectifier tube, filter cap goes in the field coil, comes back around. And I'm measuring right here, so if the field coil is bad, and that could be causing a problem. So start investigating. Hopefully, it's something minor. I checked the field coil and it measures fine, about 1100 ohms like it should. Now I'm checking the resistance from the top of that capacitor, which is the main supply to the whole radio, to ground and I'm getting less than 2 ohms. So something somewhere is not right, so I'm going to start hunting around. It's not quite a dead short, but it's pretty darn close. I believe I found the source of the problem. What I did was I hooked up my ohm meter between the chassis and that main B plus rail. There's that second filter capacitor, so my ohm meter is connected right at the top of that cap. So you see we've got basically a dead short to ground. So what I started doing was tracing around the circuit, kind of wiggling and poking and seeing if that resistance value would change and sure enough I started poking and wiggling and the value started jumping around a little bit as I poked and pushed wires and eventually I got it to go much much higher like over a hundred kilo ohms something to do with this it's a variable uh, trimmer cap for uh, one of the IF stages. Something down in here is shorting out. Something I really don't like about this design, the Filco 60, is that you've got that B plus going to the IF cans and right to that trimmer cap there and this one too. So one side of these trimmer caps is going to the main <laughs> supply for the whole set. And it's so easy to brush that against ground, either the chassis. So if you think, I think you saw when I restored the other uh, Filco 60s, that I used a quarter inch hex tool and a nut driver to adjust the trimmer caps through these holes on the back. But if you touch the side, you're shorting out the power supply. So it's like... That old operation game where you can't let anything touch these sides. Now, sure, you can uh, use an insulating alignment tool, which is what they recommend, or simply wrap some electrical tape around your tool, which is what I ended up doing. So I'll uh, redress these leads and make sure there's clearance between this lug. I imagine what's happening is this lug, I think, is brushing up against this metal plate, which is ground. And then I'll try to bring it up again. No, I really hope I didn't do any damage to the radio because of that short. I sure didn't leave it on very long, so I think it'll be alright. So 
So again, voltmeter attached to that point that had been shorted out, so now we should see a few hundred volts on it. All as well. All right. Nothing out of the speaker there. Not really even any home. Not sure which band I'm on. Oh. Hmm, nothing. Just a lot of static. Alright, so now the troubleshooting will continue. One thing I want to make sure is that the oscillator is actually oscillating. Check that easily enough with a scope. Like on that right there, that uh, element right above the cathode, I think I can detect an oscillator signal there. Well, that sure isn't looking very healthy. I should have a nice clean sine wave, not that mess. And have I go to the other band? It's a bit more looking like a sine wave, but still kind of a mess. So, definitely need to do a little troubleshooting. I think the frequency is about right, though. It's around 3 megahertz, which I think is about right for the shortwave band, but the broadcast band is definitely a mess and it's not really varying as I vary the tuning capacitor. But I haven't checked any of these tubes yet so that certainly would be a really easy fix. Otherwise uh, resistors, I have not checked the resistors yet. I double checked the wiring and didn't find any problems. I also rechecked the oscillator coil resistance didn't find any problems. Checked resistors and uh, yeah, there were a few that were pretty far off, some as much as 50%, so I went ahead and replaced them, but it's been my experience that even being off by 50% and they were all on the high side wouldn't be enough to completely kill a radio, so kept investigating further and uh, finally led me to think I better take another look at the tuning capacitor. And when I did, I discovered that I actually never resoldered the wires. <laughs> the one down in there and in there from when I had taken it out for cleaning. What I thought might also be a problem is these trimmers. These uh, kind of exposed mica trimmers that they might have shorted out. Uh, which, which may still be an issue, but I think this is a much bigger one, so... I'm going to solder those two wires back on and give this another try. Alright, let's give this another try. Well, at least it's varying a little bit when I tune the capacitor now. At least at a couple of spots. I'm not sure which band I'm on now. Let's try the other one. Yeah, I guess that was shortwave, and I don't know, I have like, like a two foot long antenna, so that could explain that. And this is the AM band, it seems to Your opinion on be working. Uh, what Aubrey Plaza did. Um, yeah. I, did, I didn't watch it. Vicky waited for a match that never came. All right. Storing your life as you knew it. So 
So it's probably AM 560. Not sure what that's all about. Might have a dirty contact somewhere. Be an organ donor. Because and he said WBBM News Time 224. We would have to ask him to be sure. Oh, wow. Uh, let us go to. Uh, <sighs> Alright, so now what? Um, I've checked the tubes and they all seem to be good, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, I want to rebuild this box capacitor and uh, maybe one or two more resistors on there that are still original. I should probably replace. I want to do a better job on replacing the bar burned out uh, bias resistor. It'd be nice to find two electrolytic cans to restuff and put back in the original mounting. But uh, that's probably not going to happen anytime soon. Um, uh, maybe my best bet is to wait for the Antique Radio Club of Illinois Swap Fest in August. There's usually lots of parts, chassis, and bins of uh, pulls, you know, various parts scrapped out of radio. So I imagine I could find something there. And, of course, I have the broken tone control. I'll uh, search around. Uh, I don't have a huge stockpile of uh, vintage radio parts. Um, so I don't know if I have any rotary on-off switches like that. But what I might try doing is, instead of a switch, I actually put a potentiometer in there in series with uh, the capacitor and see if that might actually make some um, sort of a variable tone control. I was tuning around the dial a little more and I bumped into the chassis and I noticed that this thing has some serious microphonics going on. I'm not sure which tube in particular is doing it. They all seem to, no matter where I tap, I got a similar effect. Hopefully I can just track down the one tube and replace it because that's a little bit more touchy than any radio I think I've seen before. I decided the next thing I wanted to tackle was that broken tone control. So, I just unmounted it, there's where the shaft broke off, and on the flip side, very basic switch. All it would do is swing this lever from this position up to here. When it's in the down position like now, the capacitor is out of the circuit. When it goes up, it connects this part of the metal which is ground to that pad, and the other end of this goes up the circuit here so in other words when you close when you swing this lever up it puts that capacitor into the circuit and what effect does that have well it puts a 0 0.015 microfarad capacitor in parallel with an one that's 0 0.01 microfarad that's always in the circuit in other words it uh, just about uh, or more than doubles that capacitor which affects the tone by cutting out more of the high frequencies. So I had speculated that maybe I could instead of have a, a switch have potentiometer like a high resistance like several mega ohms so when the potential potentiometer was at one extreme it would be like the closed switch. At the other extreme of very high resistance it would be like taking it out of the circuit. Still wouldn't mind trying that out but I also happened to find a switch that uh, came from I don't know what, but it is a two-position rotary switch. It's got far more contacts than I need. It's got three pairs of contacts. I just need to, to pick any one of them, really, and this would work just fine. Not only does it fit, 
but it's got the right kind of shaft and a Filco knob fits on it perfectly and if I adjust how I mount this the shaft length is pretty darn close too. Of course I could always cut off the end a little bit so it's too long which is always a good thing. Much better to be too long than too short. So if I want to keep this authentic and work the way the original one did I could go with this switch. If I want to experiment with a variable tone control, I'm going to go with a potentiometer. For now, I'm going to go with the switch because I just want to get this thing working the way it's supposed to. Then I can tinker around with making modifications. So, I will put this aside. Uh, somebody else has suggested maybe replacing that shaft. Um, I don't know. Um, it's basically just a, a rod of metal right diameter goes through there and then it got like peened over on that end I don't have any type of equipment to handle doing any work like that so I don't know if any of you out there uh, think they could fix this or have some use for this uh, let me know Here's a new tone switch mounted in place with just the one capacitor. Works just fine, at least mechanically. Hunted around through my Filco knobs and managed to find two of the proper hex knobs. I'll just leave two more to go. I posted a photo of this online and somebody made the comment uh, that if this was a multiple position rotary switch I could have multiple capacitors in there and have a range of tone controls and you know that hadn't even occurred to me but this one is only two positions and it can't uh, really be modified so we'll just have the two tone positions for now so moving on I carefully bent up the tabs on the box capacitor and the insides just fell right out because they put wrap this paper around it so the tar doesn't stick to the can, which is convenient. So here are the five old capacitor leads, and there's actually a sixth, which is just a bare wire, and that uh, had been soldered on to the can right here, and it's the common ground. So that's going bye bye, and here are the new capacitors. What I find funny is that the largest capacitor is actually the smallest that's the 0.47 microfarad rated for 450 volts they just keep improving the uh the properties of the dielectric plastics they use in the capacitors because it's smaller and smaller so i attached them all at one end for a common ground and that's the bare bus wire there which i will solder to the box just like the original and the others i put on various lengths of this pushback wire it's handy stuff cloth covered by pushback meaning you don't have to strip it you can just kind of uh, hard to do it one handed but you can just kind of push the insulation back make your connection without actually stripping the insulation off uh, so I will remount that in the can and then bundle all these wires together and push them through that hole and then recrimp the can. Before I do that though I want to secure these capacitors together a little bit better so I was thinking how they could do that. I thought about hot glue but uh, I thought I'd go looking through some various lengths of heat shrink tubing out of an assortment I bought a while ago and I actually do have some that's quite a large diameter so I think I could take a piece of this open it up, slide it around these caps and then shrink it down and it uh, will hold them together and insulate them rather nicely. That worked out quite well. It's perfect diameter. So I just bent a little hook on the end of that ground wire so I can slip that like that. And I can slide that cover back over and crimp it down except I do have a big void in there and everything's just flopping around so I need to pack that with some sort of material. I ended up stuffing some cardboard into the box to keep the capacitors from flopping around. 
I then resealed the end, wired it in, and removed all my temporary capacitors. So it's a lot neater looking now. You may notice I have also replaced a bunch of the resistors. It turned out that most of them that have these silver ends test pretty darn right on value. But the dog bones were all way off, so I ended up taking all of them out. Now these in general are all half watt resistors and I could have replaced them with these little dinky half watt metal resistors. But instead I for the most part went with these larger metal oxide which are one or two watt. Not so much because I needed the extra wattage but because the lead uh, wire gauge is a bit beefier and a little bit longer. And uh, although they're still blue, they're, <laughs> they're quite as as nasty looking as these guys and uh, it's easier to read the stripes on them. A few places I didn't have the right value so I had to go with the smaller ones and in a couple instances I even went with ones that don't have any stripes on them but oh well. So that leaves uh, figuring out what to replace this with. I'm still hunting around for something more appropriate in the electrolytics. Like I said, I don't have any cans to restuff, so for now I'll just leave some electrolytics tucked underneath. I've been digging through all my power resistors hoping to find something like this that I could replace this bad bias resistor with, but none of them are even close to the right value. And then I remember I've actually got a parts chassis in storage, I believe it's a Filco 620 that I got in a while back thinking that maybe I could put it into one of my battery powered farm uh, tombstone sets, but I uh, wasn't quite the right fit. Well, I dug up the schematic for that and it sure looks like it has exactly the right values for this resistor. However, I don't remember if it's any good or not. It's also got a tone control, so now I'm really curious to see uh, what condition that chassis is in. I recall it being kind of chewed up and uh, I know I got a video on it that I took some time ago when I first got it, but I didn't take any still photos and I'm not sure how much the video actually shows, so as soon as it stops raining, if it ever stops raining, I'm going to run over to my storage locker and pull that chassis out and see if I can salvage any parts from it. 